now uh, in this class i am going to discuss a uh, simple theory of measurement of charge by ballistic galvanometer so far in my first video lecture i have told you about a general theory of moving coil galvanometer that is the basics of a moving coil galvanometer and how a galvanometer can be used in ballistic mode now in this uh, particular lecture uh, first i have to show you the basic theory of measurement of charge and then how uh, could you implement the ballistic use of a galvanometer now for theory let us how could you measure a charge by a ballistic galvanometer let us assume in the ballistic circuit the instantaneous current i that is flowing through the coil and due to this current flow some amount of torque is produced in the coil and as i mentioned in my earlier lecture that the amount of torque produced uh, when i amount of current is flowing through the coil of the galvanometer is in a i into b right now the torque act for a short time delta t okay the time is delta t and this torque is act for a short time till this total amount of charge q is passes through the coil okay so delta t represent the time uh time period and the duration of the charge flow through the circuit okay now if delta t is the time and q is the amount of charge then we must assume that the current flowing through the circuit i must be equal to this q divided by delta t and q is equal to i into delta t now this resulting torque must have some resulting impulse and the impulse is this torque into time as this is very uh, fractional time very small time so the impulse will be torque into time so in a b i into delta t now i into delta t is equal to q so in a b into q so this is the resulting impulse now this impulse due to this impulse the rectangular coil is rotating by some amount okay and let us assume that omega is the initial angular velocity due to this impulse okay due to this impulse omega amount of angular velocity produced within the system so this is the initial angular momentum angular velocity and i as it is i m basically it is the moment of inertia of the rectangular coil then angular momentum must be i m into omega and this angular momentum must be equal to impulse angular impulse of the resulting torque so i m into omega equal to n a b into q and from this equation i can get omega equal to n a b q divided by i m right and from this equation we can calculate this q if i can calculate this i m and omega value right now direct measurement of omega is not possible so i have to use some tricks to calculate this omega now what is the tricks every system must have a property that it, its total energy must be conserved okay that means the potential energy stored within the system that is stored within the phosphor branch wire 
must be equal to the kinetic energy of the rectangular coil which is trying to uh, which is rotated due to application of this wrist angular impulse right now as this is equal to so i in m into omega this is equal to n a b into q and uh, half i omega square uh, sorry half i omega square must be equal to integration 0 to theta c into theta into d theta right so if you integrate the whole term this will be half into c theta 0 square right now if this is half into c theta 0 square then i omega square equal to c theta 0 square so I can calculate omega from this equation if you can measure this theta 0 right now as the system must govern by this equation then this is an oscillatory in nature and the time period of oscillation of this coil must be twice by root over i m divided by c and i m equal to c t square divided by 4 pi square so i have to replace this i m in the previous equation okay in this equation right okay uh, so you can uh, use the this equation of time period as this is oscillatory this equation is oscillatory in nature and the time period must be twice pi root over i m divided by c and you can calculate i m from this equation this is c t square by 4 pi square now i have to replace this i m from this equation to calculate the charge i will come this portion at later part but from equation 2 this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 4 so i have to replace this omega from equation number 2 to equation number 4 to get the q charge so i am equal to na b q divided by i m square equal to c theta g square so q square equal to c i m by na b whole square into theta g square okay so you can calculate q if you know about c i n a b square this is the square but i have to replace this i m in terms of t as i can calculate the time period of oscillation by making 50 numbers or 20 numbers of oscillation of the coil okay so time period measurement is much easier than measurement of this i m so i have to use the time period in the final equation to get the amount of charge so from equation 5a and 6 5a is this equation and 6 is this equation i can get q square equal to c theta 0 square by n a b times c t square by 4 pi square so this is c square into t square divided by 4 pi square into n a b whole square into theta 0 square right so this is c square t square divided by 2 pi n a b square theta 0 square so q must be equal to c t by 2 pi n a b theta 0 and this c divided by n a b this is equal to k which is known as galvanometer constant and the term reduces as k t divided by twice pi now k divided by twice pi is a scaling factor which is known as reduction factor of the galvanometer right so from this equation equation number seven i can measure the charge by using a galvanometer if you can measure the initial throw theta zero when this momentarily q amount of charge is passing through the galvanometer coil right so now start with the basic curve of a galvanometer which i am discussing in our previous classes uh, in my previous lecture of basic theory of galvanometer in that portion i have mentioned about this three types of curve 
one is the sky color this is under damped mo uh, over damped motion sorry and this red color curve is critically damped and the oscillatory nature with reducing amplitude is known as damped oscillatory vibration and as I told earlier that this damped oscillatory vibration its amplitude reduced uh, by a factor to the power minus p into t right and this is theta s which is the uh, steady deflection of the galvanometer right so uh, previously I have discussed everything about this curve now come to the second part general theory first of all the charge is passing through the coil momentarily okay and the when the charge is passing through the coil the coil is at rest okay and the deflection or the ballistic throw is recorded with the galvanometer in an open circuit right okay so what is open circuit that is either it is disconnected or a very high amount of resistance that are connected in series in the circuit the purpose of open circuit is that to minimize the damping right as damping is inverse proportional to one r so if you increase the high amount of resistance that will minimize the damping motion okay and as you reduce the charge the motion becomes oscillatory in nature and the condition of q and p that is uh, this p much much less than q will be satisfied only for that reason okay so from the general theory of uh, uh, galvanometer i can use that initial applied EMF of the circuit that will be zero okay as this is a high resistance applied ac across the circuit so as E equal to zero then the equation becomes IM into d square theta by dt square plus B1 d theta by dt plus C theta equal to zero and as long as the charge is passing through the coil gets rotated okay once the charge is passing once the charge is passes away then the coil moves in a oscillatory motion and I have to divide with this term I m in the both side and the equation becomes g square theta by dt square plus twice p d theta by dt plus q square into theta equal to 0. Now 2p is equal to i b1 divided by i m and q square is the natural frequency of the system that is root over c divided by i m. Right? Okay. And uh, again this solution of this equation will be theta equal to the power minus pt a to the power minus j root over q square minus p square into t plus b to the power j root over q square minus p square into d. Now this equals to e to the power minus pt a e to the power j omega t. This a and this a are not same and the second part will be b e to the power j omega t omega equal to root over q square minus p square. Now the condition, boundary condition of the system at t equal to 0, theta equals to 0. Okay. So a plus b equals to 0 initially from this equation. a plus b equal to 0. But from second condition at t equal to 0, d theta by dt is gq by im. I can get this equation from the first theory. What is the theory? From this things you see that this omega equal to Na BQ divided by IM. 
right? So NAV is basically G. So omega is d theta by dt. So d theta by dt at the initial time t equals to 0 becomes NAB into Q divided by IM. So GQ divided by IM, right? So I can get the second boundary condition that is GQ divided by IM from this part. Now, if I differentiate the this equation, I can put t equal to 0 and the equation becomes d theta by dt equal to minus p a plus b plus j b minus a into g q divided by i m. Okay. And the characteristics of this equation is this, that torque act for a very short time up to the time until this torque is applied on the circuit. Total Q amount of charge is passing through the circuit and the resulting impulse must be equal to N A B I into delta T. Okay. So these are the three condition on which this theory is dependent. Now from that equation putting A equal to B a plus b equal to 0 in this equation I can get b minus a equal to gq divided by j omega i m right and again a plus b equal to 0 so a equals to b equals to gq divided by 2 j omega i m this equation is quite possible so theta equals to from this equation if I put the value of a and b theta becomes gq by omega i m to the power minus p sin omega t as theta equal to this so time period as you can see here this is the amplitude this is the uh, reduction of amplitude due to damping force and sin omega t is the oscillatory factor, omega is the angular momentum or the frequency. Right? So the equation becomes theta equals to theta m e to the power minus pt sin omega t. So the characteristic of this curve must be a sine curve with reduced amplitude by a factor e to the power minus pt, as I mentioned earlier in my first lecture. Now, as the oscillator oscillation is damped sinusoidal with the oscillatory period. When R tends to infinity, time period will be twice pi root over C by I m minus A1 square by 4 I m square. In, the, in my previous class, I have told about the time period of oscillation and that will be Another part uh, is there that is a square plus g0 square divided by r. As r tends to infinity, that is very high resistance, is put in series. So, as r tends to infinity, so g square divided by r will be 0. So, the time period reduce in this term. Right? Now, a rate at which the amplitude falls down that is e to the power minus pt and p is equal to a1 divided by uh, 2im okay now this will be the nature of the curve the sinusoidal wave and its amplitude will be reduced by a factor with the power minus pt. Okay, now this is theta s. This is the first ballistic throw by an amount theta 1. In the other side, this is the second ballistic throw, this is theta 2. And in the next part, in another side, this is the third ballistic throw. Now this theta 1 and the theta maximum, okay, this 2 
is related by this equation theta 1 equal to theta m e to the power minus p t y 4 as this maximum amplitude will be at t equal to t by 4. Okay. So, theta 2 will appear in the second part. This is theta 2. So, theta 2 and theta m must be related by theta 2 equal to theta m e to the power minus p 3 t by 4. Theta 3 in, at the same way theta m e to the power minus p 5 t by 4. Right? So, the ratio between theta 2 and theta 1 must be e to the power minus p t by 2. Not only theta 1 by theta 2, every successive deflection on the both side of zero scale must be related by this equation. So, what is the relation? That is theta 2 divided by theta 1 equal to theta 3 divided by theta 2 equal to theta 4 divided by theta 3 equal to e to the power minus p t divided by 2. And this factor is equal to 1 by x, let us assume. X is called the decrement, right? Now, taking logarithm in both sides, I can get the logarithmic decrement. Now, what is the logarithmic decrement? Logarithmic decrement is lambda equal to log of x. This is minus pt divided by 2. Now, if the damping is absent in the system and the first ballistic throw then will be theta m right and theta m divided by theta 1 will be to the power minus lambda by 2 so 1 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda square by 8 this is a exponential series now if lambda is small then I can neglect other part other lambda except 1 plus lambda by 2. So if lambda is small theta m equal to theta 1 1 plus lambda by 2. Right? So with the help of this logarithmic decrement I can measure a relation between theta m and theta 1 if lambda is very small. If lambda is large then I have to use the exponential term. Okay. And if theta is, uh, lambda is very small, then I have to calculate only the first throw, that is theta 1. And I have to measure this t by making 20 times or 50 times free oscillation of the rectangular coil. And I can measure this lambda then I have to I can calculate the charge flowing through the circuit or the instantaneous charge flowing through the circuit with the help of this first ballistic throw. Right? So this is a general theory of ballistic use of galvanometer. Now how could you measure this lambda? That is a, a difficult question. So Calculation of logarithmic decrement. How can you calculate this logarithmic decrement uh, to for the measurement of this charge? See this picture. This is a scale. I forget to draw other lines here. There will be lots of lines. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the right side and the left side 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 again left hand side you can assume that this is negative part negative side and the right hand side you can assume that this is positive side okay now let us assume theta 1 is the first ballistic throw and theta twice in is the twice nth ballistic throw in the other side okay now, the complete oscillation is measured when uh, oscillation starts from here, it goes to this point 
and again it comes back this goes to this point and again it comes back to zero that is complete oscillation so this theta 2n is the amplitude of nth oscillation in the opposite side of theta 1 and the next amplitude in the right hand side that will be theta 2n plus 1 ok now say first deflection of right spot on one side of the zero scale in the reading scale that is theta 1 and theta 2n plus 1 the deflection of nth oscillation in the same side so theta 1 the ratio between theta 1 and theta 2n plus 1 equal to theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 into theta 3 by theta 4 dot 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 theta twice n by theta 2 n plus 1 and each of this ratio must be equal to e to the power lambda as each of this ratio is equal to e to the power lambda then this total term will be e to the power twice n lambda so there is two, num two n number of terms right so if you can measure any of the first throw of ballistic galvanometer and you measure the 51st throw or 101 throw then a to this twice n becomes 50 or 100 right so by measuring any two oscillation in the same side you can calculate this lambda ok so lambda equal to 1 by twice in log theta 1 by 20 plus 1 and this will be 2.3026 I bring this equation in terms of log 10 base because I can use the log table so this will be log 10 base theta 1 by theta 20 plus 1 ok so n will be the number of oscillation after which after the after which I am going to measure the next amplitude right so theta 1 is the first measured amplitude and theta 2n plus 1 is the nth measured amplitude at the same side okay now there will be a problem when you are going to measure theta 1 and successively you can uh, going to measure theta 2 in a, another side our i does not always can measure a particular incident very carefully because there will be lots of error present during the measurement some of them you can read in your practical classes and you have to eliminate those error to get the correct result now you know that the ratio between theta 1 and theta 2 is equal to theta 2 divided by theta 3 and obviously the sum of this 2 and sum of this 2 and their ratio must be equal to this 2 so theta 1 you are going to measure in the right side theta 2 you are going to measure in the left side so if you are going to stick in this place you have make some error here you are going to make some error here so this 2 error if you make a sum this 2 error will be eliminated automatically and this will be beta 1 by beta 2 the ratio of this beta 1 by beta 2 must be equal to x ok in the same way for successive measurement you can going to eliminate the left hand side error and the right hand side error now beta it is completely free from error so beta 1 divided by beta 2n plus 1 this must be 
beta 1 by beta 2 into beta 2 by beta 3 dot 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 beta twice n divided by beta twi twice n plus 1 and this must be equal to 2n lambda. So from this equation as 2n uh, lambda will be 1 by twice n log of beta 2n divided by beta 2n plus 1. So 2.3026 by 2n log 10 base beta 2n by beta 2n plus 1. This beta as is completely free from error, you can easily calculate the logarithmic decrement lambda from this equation. So uh, I think this will be uh, a complete discussion on the ballistic use of a galvanometer. How can you use the ballistic galvanometer? Uh, uh, you can use the charge measurement equation and you have to use this logarithmic decrement to get the final result of measurement of charge. Right? Okay. Thank you.